Hello, my name is Eddie McGriff, and I'm a regional extension agent with Alabama Extension. And today is my guest. I have Dr. Ron Smith on my near left, and Dr. Scott Graham on my far left. They're both cotton entomologists with uh, Auburn. And what we're not able to do is have face-to-face -face contact, so we weren't able to do face-to-face -face with the scout school. What we plan to do is, as we come along with the pests, we're going to do these YouTube videos. So I'm going to turn it over to Ron and Scott in a minute and uh, just look forward to uh, them going through the plant bugs today. All right, let's uh, talk about plant bugs. We're here about the middle of June in Cherokee County, Alabama with Eddie and doing some YouTube work uh, of filming. Uh, but let's talk about uh, kind of the uh, story uh, uh, plant bugs are going to be the tarnished plant bugs are going to be the next pest that we probably need to focus on in cotton this year. So let me kind of tell you how they get started. The uh, primary wild host uh, around Alabama is this uh, plant daisy fleabane. So they've been on daisy fleabane now for one or two generations, but it will be drying down here real soon, or it already has in some areas of the state. And when they do, the adult plant bugs that's uh, on the flea bane will look for another host. And cotton is about the only good host that they have at that time. So when they arrive in cotton in June, they do two things. They feed on pinhead squares, if a cotton has pinhead square stage. If not, they'll actually feed in the terminals of young cotton. This year I'm a little bit concerned that we're going to have some cotton late planted that may still be in the uh, pre-pinhead pre square stage. So they may feed in the terminals, which causes crazy cotton. But also what they do and what we don't pay enough attention to is they're depositing eggs in the stem of the plant during June when they move into the field. And those eggs take about uh, 10 days to hatch into a little small nymph, and then it takes the nymph about another to, uh, 10 to 15 days to be an adult. So right now we use sweep nets and we focus on the adults, our threshold. We'll let Scott talk about all that in a few minutes. but. Uh, as we approach blooming stage of cotton then, we've had time for those eggs to hatch and move into immature, so we change our focus after we get to first bloom, and, uh, and we've got different thresholds, different scouting techniques and so forth, so uh, in early July or in post bloom then, we'll be focused on the immature stage of the plant, of the, of the insect. What about control? Well. We've got several things, that, and most of them work. Some of them have a plus or a minus, and uh, it, right now we're t targeting adults. So we've got two or three choices. Uh, uh, it's in our recommendation. Acephate's in there, but we've had so many spider mite calls, we really don't want to use acephate. We've got bifenthrin, uh, centric, transform. Now, two of those will actually take out aphids, we may be also seeing aphids come in this next wind, the wind of the next couple of weeks. And so that's our choices. Once we get post bloom, bidrin comes back in as an additional choice. And, uh, and then we have the pyrethroids that uh, will work to some degree on that. But, uh, oh, and I, and I forgot, uh, imidacloprid is probably going to be the dominant thing that growers use here uh, pre bloom, and it will also be used some post bloom. It will kill, uh, it will kill. Uh, Adults, amateurs, not 100%, maybe it never has been, 60 to 80% depending on the rate you use, but it also control aphids. So for, well, one thing I'll talk about is sampling for plant bugs. And when we sample, the, the methods and the techniques that we use change as the cotton progresses throughout the season. So while we're in the squaring season from pinhead square really to about first bloom, uh, we're primarily doing two things. We're looking at uh, square retention on the upper two or three nodes of the plant, and we're also uh, sampling with the sweep net. Now, the, the square retention is important because that tells us how much damage are these tarnished plant bugs doing now, and when we come back, if we do make an application, that tells us what level of protection did we get from that spray, because as Dr. Smith mentioned, these plant bugs can move into the field at different times, so sometimes Determining your efficacy from your insecticide application can be difficult if we're only looking at adult plant bugs in the field. Our threshold is going to be uh, eight, bu eight adults per 25 sweeps while we're in the uh, squaring season. When we move uh, later into the year, we get to bloom. As Dr. Smith said, then we're starting to look for immature 
plant bugs, which are uh, small green bugs uh, that will move rather rapidly on the drop cloth. We're, at this point, we're sampling with a, a black drop cloth between two rows, and we vigorously shake each side of the row and, and count the number of plant bugs on the, on the sheet. And at that point, we're looking at three bugs per one drop is our threshold. And uh, it's very important to stay ahead of, of these immature plant bugs, as, as Dr. Smith said, the use of something like a Novoeuron Diamond, an insect growth regulator, if we can time that uh, with uh, the influx of the adult plant bugs just prior to bloom or right at bloom, then we can get good residual and try to keep the population beat down uh, until we get later in the season and we start shifting our focus on the other pests. Scott and I will be uh, putting out a lot of tweets and other uh, information as we move into this plant bug uh, window. And uh, I will add one little thing to that. Uh, it appears to me that in dry summers where the flea bane dries down very rapidly, we get a big movement in a short period of time. That's really kind of easy in a way because it's easy to tell when you need to spray if you've got a lot of them in the field uh, over a short period of time. But uh, in wet springs, uh, wet dunes, uh, the flea bane will stay fresh a little longer, say gradually drift over from flea bane into cotton. That's a lot harder to, uh, to determine the threshold when you've got a gradual movement rather than a short-term movement.